For grace you are saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not the works, lest anyone should boast, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. There's a lot of information packed into this single verse. To begin with, it says, for grace you are saved, through faith. So let's stop there for a second. Grace means benefit, favor, or gift. It is from the word grace that we get the word gratitude, or sense of being grateful. Note that grace alone does not save. Grace is both the extension of the gift and the gratitude of its recipient. To be grateful, one must first receive. While grace is extended to all mankind, not all mankind accepts it. And not all mankind is grateful. Grace is extended to all, but salvation comes by faith. A simple concept, but many miss the big picture. Let's look at the next section of the verse. And that not of yourselves. What is not of ourselves? Grace? If it refers to grace, then the Lord has wasted words unnecessarily. Of course, we can't extend grace to ourselves. It's not only impossible, such an extension of grace would be meaningless. We haven't the authority to save ourselves. Listen to that verse again. For grace you are saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Since we already know that grace is not of ourselves, that only leaves one other element that can be the gift of God, and that's saving faith. So the scriptures say that even the faith that saves us is a gift from God, not something that we conjure up as a result of our own works, lest anyone should boast. This verse is the great equalizer of Christians. John 6, 4, 4. No one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draw on him, and I will raise him up at the last day. We all come to the cross the same way, recipients of God's extension of grace, which we receive by a faith which is God-given. None of us has any reason to feel superior. If we are saved, it is because we were drawn of the Father to the Son. John 6, 4, 5, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Therefore, anyone who hears and learns from the Father comes to me. Let's let that sink in. Uh, Matthew 20, 16. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many will be called, but few chosen. And again, for many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22, 14. And again, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name he may give to you. John 15, 16. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are thee called, according to his purpose. Again, Romans 8, 28. See, the goodness of God is converting and saving sinners, encourages others to hope in his grace and mercy. Our faith, our conversion, and our eternal salvation are not of works, lest any man should boast. These things are not brought to pass by anything done by us. Therefore, all boasting is shut out. It is the free gift of God and the effect of being quickened by His power. It was His purpose to which He prepared us by blessing us with knowledge of His will and His Holy Spirit producing such a change in us that we should glorify God by our perseverance to His holiness. Holiness means purification, which is a process. It's also accompanied by God through Jesus. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1.6 There are no Christians more deserving than others. Because you have not yet achieved the state of holiness others have doesn't mean you are less favored. We all come to the cross equally lost, and we all came away equally saved. Salvation is an eternal state for which each of us were chosen before the world begun. 2 Timothy 1.9 who hath saved us and called us with holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the war began. Paul writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 9. Uh, Titus 1, 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. See, we are eternally secure because we are eternally saved, which was accomplished in the mind of God when each of us was called, before the world began. Uh, let's bring it together. Nobody can come to Christ unless they are drawn by the Father, who provides us with both the extension of the offer of salvation and the faith necessary to receive it, a calling that was sealed in heaven before the world began according to His purpose and grace. Our salvation is immediate and eternal, but our purification is a process which, having begun in us at the moment of salvation, will be performed in us by Christ until the day we stand before Him, lest anyone should boast. Romans 3, chapter 10, verse 10-12. through 12. 
As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Again, Romans 3, 10 through 12. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 23 through 24. Galatians 2.21 I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Legalism runs counter to the clear teaching of Scripture, and this is very difficult doctrine to both teach and understand. It sounds like a license to sin, but it's not. It's an understanding that our relationship to Christ is unique, that God knows our hearts, and He has already judged us accordingly so that sin cannot reign supreme upon our mortal body and thereby render us useless to our calling. The most effective weapon we have in our war with the enemy is the knowledge that he cannot take away our salvation. There's never a time when we are unworthy to tell others of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6, 11-12 And Paul tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, Paul says we put on the whole armor of God in specific order, the certainty of truth of Scripture, the breastplate of righteousness imputed by Christ, the knowledge of the gospel and the shield of faith. Our heads are protected by the helmet of salvation, the certainty of our eternal salvation. These are all defensive weapons. So having secured our defense, we then take up our only offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. If the enemy can convince us of our own personal unrighteousness, of which each of us is acutely aware, or cause us to doubt the truth of Scripture or our faith, which is a gift from God, lest anyone should boast, or cause us to doubt our own salvation, then we will not be able to effectively wield the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. My friends, God chose each of us, and His plan is to use us to seek out those similarly chosen and introduce them to their Savior. That is our assignment on this earth. That is our calling to spread the gospel. That isn't Calvinism. Calvinism teaches that because the church was predestined, we are under no obligation to lead people to Christ. God has already chosen them, so he'll sort it all out. There's a joke about Calvinists who fell down the stairs and remarked, thank God that's over. Instead, the scripture teaches that God foreknew who would be saved. Therefore, it is predestined. But God also knew who he selected to carry the word to that person. And the enemy will work overtime to thwart God's will by convincing us that we are not worthy to carry it. As Christians, we have an awesome responsibility before God. We, you and I, have been assigned to seek out the lost and offer them the gospel. To accomplish our mission, we need to be fully equipped for the task. And that's what eternal security is all about. It's not a license to sin, but rather a certain knowledge that our sin is forgiven. And Jesus said of his sheep, the church, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. To give means to bestow. It's a present tense verb. The scripture does not say, I will give them the eternal life. It says, it has already been bestowed upon us. And Jesus said, no man can pluck his sheep from my hand. I am a man. If I can send my way out of his eternal gift, It's neither eternal nor is it a gift. It then becomes wages dependent upon my works. But the scripture says, Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And since I, a man, can by my works undo his word, it means his word is not true. Our works are the fruits of our labor for Christ. Our labor is to lead others to Christ. Corinthians 3.10 According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. 1 Corinthians 3.10 Folks, our foundation is our salvation, but our obligation is to build upon that foundation by leading others to the cornerstone of life. But our individual salvation is already an accomplished fact. My mission with this channel is to provide each one of us with the information necessary to equip us for the work of one-on-one evangelism. Henry Ford once said, I'd rather have 1% of the work of 100 men than 100% of the work of one man. See, Ford was the father of mass production. In the time it takes for one man to build a single car, 100 men can build a 1,000 cars. 
So don't let the enemy render you powerless. You are worthy, not because you are you, but because him who made you worthy according to his will and by his own hand. Luke 10, 2. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Again, Luke 10, 2. And thank you for listening. Uh, Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, God bless you and your families. Thank you.